Welcome everybody to our core coffee chat, our first one of February. And again, invite you to turn on your cameras and give a big wave, big hello. Um, so nice to see so many faces. So thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to um, be hosting today's coffee chat in particular. Um, we think there's gonna be some really interesting information that we'll get to learn about. Um, so let me bring up the slides. So again, for anyone that hasn't participated in one of our core institute events yet, I'm Nicole Young, and I'm joined today by my co-host. Hi everyone, Nicole Lezen. Nice to see everyone. And we are um, also joined by our team member Stella Lauerman, who is doing uh, providing the simultaneous interpretation. And we're super pleased to have Heather Thompson from the Health Improvement Partnership joining us today as well as Liz Cowley and Daniel Escobar from Unite Us. Uh, and they'll be doing a, a little explanation and demonstration of this new resource that's about to go live in our community. And again, just for anyone that is joining now that didn't hear the explanation earlier, uh, we do encourage everyone to keep yourselves muted until you um, have an, until there's time for questions and answers. Um, but we do encourage you to turn your camera on if you're comfortable. Um, we have interpretation provided today in Spanish. So again, uh, everybody needs to select a language channel, either English or Spanish. And you do that by finding the globe icon if you're using the Zoom desktop app and you select either English or Spanish. Um, if, you're, if you're listening in English, you do not need to select mute original audio. But if you select Spanish, you do need to, to select silence original audio so that you're only hearing the interpreter. And then we invite you or encourage you to rename yourselves in the participant window. And that just helps us know who we have participating on the different language channels so that when it, especially when it comes time for any questions or answers, we are, we're ready uh, with interpretation and, and translation as needed. So, Find your name in the participant window, have your mouse over your name until you see more up here, and then click on that. And you should see a box that says to rename yourself and add ENG for English, ESP for Espanol, or BIL if you're bilingual and might actually be listening on both channels. Okay, so Nicole and I are the lead consultants and, and facilitators of this thing called CORE, which stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. And some of you might remember it as something that started off as a funding model that the county and city of Santa Cruz adopted a few years ago to fund evidence-based safety net services in our community. And in the years since then, it's, it's really evolved into a broader movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County using a results-based collective impact approach that's responsive to community needs. And really our work has been fueled by so much input and many insights from partners from local government and nonprofits and philanthropy um, and community groups. And all of that input is, has resulted in these mission statements and vision statements that you see here on the slide with equity at the center. And when we talk about equitable health and well being, we're talking about creating the conditions for people throughout the lifespan, throughout our county, to experience these eight interconnected, really interdependent um, aspects of health and well being everything from health and wellness to lifelong learning and education, economic security and mobility, thriving families, community connectedness, healthy environments a safe and just community and stable, affordable housing and shelter. And so when we think about what it takes to create those conditions through programs, through practices, through policies, knowing what resources are available and being able to connect people to the right resources at the right time is, a, is definitely an important part of that. And we, you know, in, in CORE really believe in building on the strengths and assets that exist already and we have many of those in our community, both in terms of the organizations that provide services 
and existing resource directories and, and networks like 211 that is administered by United Way um, and many others that we really wanna look at how do we build on those um, and use additional resources and technology and all of our best skills and, and relationships to, to really fill the gaps. And so that's one of the things we'll learn about today. Um, and again, today's core coffee chat is one of the offerings um, that's included in what we're calling the Core Institute for Innovation and Impact. It's a relatively new concept that has emerged in our work for Core, um, but really it's just an opportunity to um, build shared knowledge, build shared skills, really um, work together to be creating those conditions for health and well-being, again, through programs, practices, and policies. So you'll be hearing much more about the Court Institute as, as we continue uh, our work here in CORE, but very pleased to be um, seeing so many of you join us today for this topic. And whoops, not quite ready to share that one yet. And so I'm going to turn it over now to um, Heather Thompson to introduce our guest speakers. Good morning, Santa Cruz. My name is Heather Thompson and I uh, work at Health Improvement Partnership of Santa Cruz County. I was hired November 16th and have the pleasure of assisting Unite Us in our community for a successful launch. And uh, with the theme of Nicole with equity and inclusion, I want to just acknowledge that uh, February, here we are, February 2021 is Black History Month. Um, and just shout out that since 1976, every United States president has officially designated the month of February as Black History Month. Um, so that's just a little fun fact to get us off. Um, I do want to really recognize and acknowledge existing community resources, um, such as the United Way 211. And this program has been around for some time now, and it really, uh, assist the residents of Santa Cruz to easily connect to a wide variety of health and human services. So hats off right now to the 211 manager and all the 211 call specialists. Um, we really see this Unite Us platform as something that is complementary to existing community resources. And I'd just like to distinguish a little bit about how they're different I really uh, view the 211 as for the public, for the residents, and Unite Us is really around uh, impacting the work of service providers and allowing us to communicate bi-directionally and have a closed loop referral system. Um, so I, I really like to think of the human being in the center, you know, of that slide that Nicole showed. And if you, you know, understand buffering services and being able to have people who need housing and food, you know, all of these services will be at your fingertips with the Unite Us platform. And I'd also like to recognize the work of our California uh, Surgeon General Nadine Burke Harris, you know, we in Santa Cruz County are an ACEs Aware recipient. And, you know, ACEs are not our destiny, right? Adverse childhood experiences. Um, and we really believe that this technology will allow us to have a much more robust array of services and connect us um, to be able to increase access and increase these services and frankly increase the resiliency and have a real positive impact on health outcomes for everyone. I love Unite Us because it's all inclusive, just meaning anyone interested, you're welcome. We would love to have you, love to have you join. Um, and uh, another little fun fact before I give it over to Liz Callie and the Unite Us team is that by the end of 2021, 80% of California will be using this platform, which blows my mind because think of all the buffering services from Lake Tahoe down to Riverside, right? And it'll all be at your fingertips. 
And um, for those of us who love IT support, I know from working in community-based organizations, um, sometimes we don't have the IT infrastructure that we love and cherish. And Unitas is like, no problema because they have technical support 18 hours a day, they have live chat, they have customer service on the phone. And I really think that this touts and, and displays the caliber of this program. So uh, without further ado, I would love to introduce Liz Kelly. Uh, unite us, take it away. Thank you, Heather. Heather's the best hype uh, lady that can ever start off a meeting. So I really appreciate it. Um, my name is Liz Cowley. I'm a community engagement manager with Unite Us in our Northern California office. Um, and before I share my screen and we jump into the presentation and demo, I wanna make sure my um, colleague David has a chance to introduce himself as well. So David, I'll kick it over to you. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Escobar, the Community Engagement Manager here in the Inland Empire, um, covering counties of Riverside and San Bernardino. And I am excited to be here presenting with Liz to you all. So um, back to you at the studio, Liz. <laughs> Thanks, David. Um, so as Heather said, Unite Us is here in California and here to stay and here to make an impact and here to support your communities and counties. Um, I always like to kick it off showing this slide because when we think about the importance of connecting social, behavioral, and clinical factors of a whole person's health, we realize the breakdown of that is much more of the social and behavioral factors than it is of the clinical nature. Now, I'm not saying don't go to your doctor's office, don't get your checkup, but we are saying research and our frontline experience know that the support that we're getting in the community, our access to fresh and healthy foods, the zip code of where we're born are going to have specific determinants of our health. And Unite Us is here to support through a technology platform to better connect those services so we can better serve our community. Um, a little bit about Unite Us and kind of where we come from. So we are veteran founded. We were founded about eight years ago by um, two folks that were returning home from active duty to find their own experiences in the fragmented health and social world. Um, they saw that veterans were experiencing this across the board when trying to access services. And so they dedicated themselves to creating not only a technology platform, um, but a team on the ground to support the local needs. Um, and so quickly they found that, you know, by expanding beyond the veteran community, they were able to reach an expansive, um, you know, a population of folks that were needing support really across the country and in communities all over um, uh, our, great, our great country. So here in California, um, we have been doing some really cool things for the past year or so, and as Heather mentioned, we're going to be covering 80% of the state by the end of 2021. Um, so I would not be surprised as we kind of get to 2022 that this map continues to be filled in um, and we are supporting initiatives on the ground. So while we are a statewide network, um, we have local initiatives and local focus. So as David said, he's covering Inland Empire down in Southern California. I am covering various territories and regions in Northern California. And we're here to learn about what is locally happening on the ground. How can we better support the team and initiatives um, that are you know, out there supporting the community? And how does Unite Us fit in to make sure that your care coordination um, is the most efficient and effective as it can be? Um, so what you see up here um, is uh, a few things I just want to point out. Um, as you can tell, we really focus on a unified platform where we're supporting clients. Um, we're also thinking about tracking longitudinally across the state and across your county and community. So each organization, when you join, you have the ability to access data and metrics that are really going to not only support your own organization's informed decisions, but the community as a whole. Um, the, the, the opportunity to get the real-time analytics, to truly see that your client is getting connected um, to another provider um, and getting the services they need without you know, having to call them, having to send multiple emails, it's all really at your fingertips. 
And as you can see, partnerships with Kaiser Permanente, Blue Shield, um, and then Santa Cruz, specifically our partnership with Shio um, and HIP, um, and Heather and her team are really supporting the on-the-ground rollout and community connections. Um, so our funding partners are really supporting the regional efforts. Um, our convening partners like HIP and like other local leaders who are stepping up um, and to help kind of identify how this rolls out. You know, the fact that Nicole asked us to come present to all of you to share this, um, we see you all as community champions and folks that can not only help me and our team better learn what Santa Cruz needs to be successful, but we hope you would consider being a network partner, um, joining the network, utilizing the platform and getting your team up and running on a really efficient and effective care coordination platform. So I have been doing a ton of talking. Um, I want to pause after I share this slide because I think it's always important to be really transparent about what what is the cost um, and what and, and really who is funding this opportunity. Um, so you know, Unite Us is really proud to share that alongside our funders um, like Shio and like our statewide um, partners. They're enabling community-based organizations, safety net clinics like FQHCs and um, certified community health clinics to join at no cost and to have unlimited licenses. Similarly, our county departments, um, as well as our university system, city governments are also able to join for free up to 25 licenses. Um, and again, the people who are funding this are Shio, are these other health systems that are saying, we want to put this platform first, we want to lower the barriers to accessing support that our clients need. Um, and that's why we're making sure this will remain free for our, our, our community. You will see up here any additional costs beyond our free platform, which really includes all of our services, um, is any integration, so specific, specifically um, beyond the EHR. Um, data and analytics that are beyond what we're already offering in the free platform, and then screenings and assessments that are not already included, um, and we do have a variety of them already on the platform. So let me take a quick pause um, and just see if there's any questions or thoughts or comments. Liz, I actually um, just wanted to ask, because everyone noticed I posted the link to the Spanish version of these slides in the chat so that if anyone wants to look at the slides in Spanish as they're as they're listening they can do that and then um, there's a question about will a, a link be available to the English slides afterwards also yeah I'd be happy to share these slides out great thank you so any questions thoughts concerns sometimes it's easier to think about what we're worried about <laughs> when learning something new or new, learning about a new tool There's a question, do you see that Liz in the chat about, curious about the thinking of limiting county and city providers? This, yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, can you share a little bit more um, about what is particularly concerning about that or maybe the role of city and county providers that you see in Santa Cruz? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to. Um, hi, I'm Meg Aronel from Children's Behavioral Health and I just, uh, this sounds like such a great thing that's coming for our county and wonderful that the CBOs and safety net clinics will get unlimited access, but, you know, the county provides a ton of um, services to the Medi-Cal population and others, and 25 licenses is, you know, in, in terms of, like, I can just say from Children's Behavioral Health, we have about 50 people in our division, yep. so, you know, I know we're not, I mean, the, the county's hurting for um, funds right now. I don't know how you know, we could ever match the other providers having access if, if we're so limited, um, particularly because the county has so many different programs that I think would benefit potentially from having access to the platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for raising that. Um, and so the first thing I'll say is that we are always eager to have individual conversations with county departments, county leaders to learn what they need and how we can make something work. So that's where I would pull in my partners um, from our network development team to talk a little bit more about what our contracting looks like. Um, so I don't have a perfect answer for you right now, other than I would love to continue the conversation with you and chat a little bit more about, you know, better understanding what the needs are and how we can make it work. But thank you for bringing it up. 
And one more thing just to point out to the community, we learned that um, yesterday from the Director of Network Development at Unite Us that um, in addition to the 25 licenses for County Office of Education, there's also the opportunity for 25 licenses per unified school district. So I thought that was some great information to share today. Yes, thank you for sharing that, Heather. And it's also, it's 25, it's 25, up to 75, so 25 per department, but as you just shared, um, Meg, your department's 50, right? So it's, uh, you know, having to pare down from there. Sorry, um, I think I misunderstood too. I thought you were saying 25 for the whole county, but you're saying 25 for each division? Up to 75 licenses, yes. For the whole county, up yeah. to 75. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Okay. Right, so yeah. And and most counties, as we know, are bigger than than seventy five users or or folks that be utilizing it. Um, but Heather, you brought up a great point. Um, when we're thinking about school districts themselves, we're not saying twenty five across all school districts, as it was mentioned per school district. So there's a really unique opportunity to think about social workers and and folks that are frontline through the the school districts as well. Any other thoughts or questions maybe on how we're Liz, rolling out? Liz, um, yeah, sorry. We have one question from Christina. It says, in addition to COE, would institutions of higher education be able to participate in the network? Um, oh, that's a, that's a great question. So um, regarding like universities, like local universities or even um, community colleges? Yes. Yeah, so we are similarly, it's 20, up to 25 licenses per university or per community college. Anything beyond that would, would have to be additional conversations with our team um, around pricing. Great, thank you. Sure. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the platform. Um, so, you know, the visual that you're seeing now is a very linear example. When we get into the platform, we'll be able to explore a little bit more, but this just shows how expansive and kind of any door approach that the Unite Us platform can be for folks accessing services. So as you can see, a referral can come in from any of these access points, whether it's through a primary care physician, an ED, a health affiliate, a community org, or really any other of the other network partners, a self-referral through the platform um, to an organization. At that point, the organization accepts a referral, a case is resolved, and the health is impacted and a feedback loop is going back to all of the other organizations that are also involved with that client. So what you're seeing here is one network, one access, or excuse me, one network and many entry points and the ability for providers to have insight into their shared client's journey. Um, so this is a, um, again, a very like simplified linear slide. We'll talk a little bit more about it in the platform but just wanted to preview that quickly. Um, and let's talk a little bit about our access and controls. So when we're thinking about um, the importance of protecting um, individual information, client level information, as well as org information, Unite Us takes security and privacy to a premium. Um, so not only do we have regular compliance um, and regulatory procedures on a yearly basis to make sure we're up to snuff, um, we have an entire legal and compliance team that is ensuring when we're operating within the platform, we're doing so um, within HIPAA compliance, um, as well as FERPA, FIPS, um, and 42 RFC Part 2. Um, so we're covering a really wide spread of regulations ensuring that organizations can participate in the platform. And we also make sure that clients, when they are having their information shared on the platform, informed consent is a key feature. Um, and so informed consent ensures that a client is saying, yes, I confirm to sharing my information over the platform. This is not the same as a release of information or consenting to a program, but simply to have their information shared. Um, and we do that in a variety of different ways, as you can see on the screen, and we'll show you in the platform. And then we take it a step further by also identifying within your organization, who should have which role and what access to which programs. 
So this is where things can get a little funky when we're talking about it verbally. Sometimes it's easier to see um, in a visual matter, which we can do in the platform. But if you have five programs and you have 15 users and you want to identify who has access to which programs, you're able to do that. You're also able to say, I only want my managers or, or supervisors to have access to reporting and not the other general users in the platform. Similarly, we both have program service type viewing permissions as well as sensitive service type viewing permissions. So we're also identifying that there are non-clinical and clinical providers supporting a client at the same time and that the clinical provider may be providing a service that the non-clinical provider doesn't necessarily one need access to or should have access to. Um, so we're ensuring that mental behavioral, legal, um, and physical health services are being protected, um, as well as individuals who maybe identify with an HIV status or a specific legal status, as well as, um, excuse me, as well as um, survivors of domestic violence, making sure that their individual information is also remaining um, confidential within the platform. So all to say, we get very specific and niche into configuring your organization and how it needs to be um, set up in the platform. Um, and so it can be utilized safely and securely within your org and across clients. Um, let me just pause and see if there's any questions or thoughts um, on this, or David, would you add anything to around our security and protections? Um, I would say that, you know, often enough, uh, we receive concerns regarding um, the sensitive permission, um, tag permissions. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of, uh, of our organizations or CBOs might not necessarily um, need or require access to certain uh, confidentiality agreements that we have within the uh, platform. And I think um, that's something we should definitely highlight um, with some of our sensitive groups and um, individuals that might fall within a safety net, um, whether it be a women's shelter or um, an HIV clinic, you know, there's some things that I think um, when we are talking about signing a patient consent level form, um, we should really like specify and distinct what that means to versus also the, the service types um, that we have within the platform. Yeah. Thanks so much for adding that in. Any other thoughts or questions? Okay, um, so this is just a slide, the next two slides, this one specific on our COVID-19 response, as well as um, how we're thinking about equity across the platform and, you know, or excuse me, Unite Us's role. Um, and so this is just a great example of how our platform was able to produce data and analytics around response to COVID-19 um, within our um, specific network in North Carolina. Um, so as you can see here, not only are we identifying COVID-19 exposure assessments, need, um, social needs screenings, but we're able to utilize this data to identify which services those individuals are specifically requesting. And then you can even break it down by demographics, thinking about race, um, age, uh, even kind of zip code, thinking about a county spread within a state or within a specific region. Um, so just kind of a, a bit of an insight into what our analytics look like and how we have been responding during COVID-19. Um, I just saw a question come in. Let's let's see if I can answer it because I think it's around our protection services. So before we move on, uh, what sort of protection of information does the platform have for clients who may be concerned about sharing their data due to citizenship status? So that's a great question. Um, and what we say to a lot of organizations or remind them of is there are only three data points that are necessary for the platform. And that's first name, last name, and date of birth. Um, now, any additional information beyond that, like address, zip code, any demographic information does not need to be included on the platform. Um, so that will ensure a bit more protection for that client when accessing services um, through the platform itself. And when we're also thinking about general intake, most organizations at the minimum are looking for at least a first name or a last name. Um, so adding in that date of birth would just be the um, third, third category of need to create a client profile and to send a referral. Does that answer your question, Catherine?
Great. So this is where I want to um, pause and kind of put this out as a question to the group and learn a little bit more about how Santa Cruz organizations and your community is responding and thinking about equity in 2021. Um, the reason I bring this up as a strong point for us is what I just shared previously with COVID-19 tracking and data, data and analytics. Um, our team is also really thinking very thoughtfully about how we play a role with an equity lens in each community that we're supporting. Um, and so as you can see from up here, we have a variety of ways in which we see ourselves participating in equity in a community, but want to learn from you all, what strategic um, initiatives do you have on your radar this year, or what actions are you taking within your own organization to think with a stronger equity lens? And I, I don't expect anyone to have their strategic plan memorized for 2021 either, so. <laughs> anyone wanna share maybe one comment? Oh, okay, we see a comment. We're working to, um, to decenter whiteness at Children's Behavioral Health. That's awesome, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. What else, any other? <laughs> Hi, Liz, I could share something. Sure. This is David Brody with First Five Santa Cruz County. <clears throat> but I just wanted to share some work that we're doing collaboratively with Public Health, Health Improvement Partnership, Human Services Department, whole range of partners, and probably a number of people on this call are familiar with because of the core um, webinars that have happened around it. But we've, as, as Heather mentioned, have an ACEs Aware grant from the state to focus on the prevention of adverse childhood experiences and um, you know, treatment and healing for those that have experienced them. But we've really broadened that work with a group called the Center for Community Resilience to focus on what are the adverse community environments that create or are root causes of adverse community, uh, adverse childhood experiences. And a big center on that, a big focus of that is racism and discrimination and how we can center equity work around the work we're doing to prevent ACEs overall in our community. That's great. Thank you for sharing, David. And I see some more comments coming in. Susan shares, we're working to ensure equity in vaccine distribution with COVID-19 response. That's great. I've been hearing that in a variety of different counties and communities. And I think also within Santa Cruz during my conversations, been hearing that a lot, which is so fantastic to hear. Um, Allison shares, building resilient voice and power through community building, organizing advocacy, shifting power structures and decision making to be authentically inclusive. That's a great sentence. Thank you for sharing. Wonderful. We'll keep, I uh, encourage you to keep sharing in the chat. I'm sure others are also um, eager to hear and see. Um, but I bring this up because as you can see, we want a piece of the um, uh, solution in our support. We want to be able to say our data and analytics can also help with your equity lens by identifying um, whether it be specific demographics or populations that are accessing services, um, understanding which services they are reacting to and needing when we're thinking about COVID-19 or even the wildfires. Um, all of California, it seems like, can be um, or is being affected by wildfires and the displacement of people in certain populations um, can be reflected in this data. Seeing that this usually the same communities that are being affected by natural disasters, um, whether they're being moved or being serviced in their community, um, you know, identifying the needs that they have and being able to respond to them as a community with these hard numbers and data um, is really a, a strong point. So with that said, I'm going to jump into the platform. Um, Nicole, is this a good time to ask you, um, do I have control of the recording or are you able to? No, that's me. I'll, I'll pause it. Maybe from folks that are sh sharing their screen, thumbs up, maybe in the middle, how they're feeling about the platform or the opportunity. I see some claps. Great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. 
And just to let everyone know that HIP and Together We Care, Whole Person Care, uh, many, many committees are getting together with executive and leadership and having conversations about needs and if there's any gaps with regards to funding, how we can uh, fill these swiftly. Um, we've had a lot of discussion um, with the new uh, HSD Housing for Health Division, Dr. Robert Ratner. So I just wanna let everyone know um, we're being very thoughtful and conscious about this rollout and lots of good to come. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Um, yeah, the final thing I'll say is I am here to chat. I would love to have a conversation with your organization. The first step to joining is filling out a registration form. We're also holding bi-weekly community strategy sessions, which is similar to what you experienced today. Please encourage your colleagues and team to come. Um, and I'm here to support and would be happy to reach out afterwards. Um, I don't know, yeah, we can put our, uh, Heather's email is in there, mine is on the screen. Um, and Nicole, not sure if you'd be comfortable sharing emails after this, or if folks wanna share their emails in the chat, we can collect from there, whatever is most appropriate for everyone. Thank you. Great, thanks, thanks Liz. And if anybody still has questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And if we aren't able to get answers today, um, Liz and Heather are, and David sounds like are more than available and, and ready to, to answer questions. Um, so we're gonna move to our wrap up. I think Nicole Lezen's going to share her screen again. We have just a couple uh, final details to cover as usual. Yes, let me do that. So as I posted in the chat after David made the comment about the ACEs Aware and Center for Community Resilience work um, going on in the county on Thursday, next week, uh, midday, there's uh, a session that's part of a series, but you don't have to have attended the, the first uh, ones to join this one. So this slide and in the chat has the information for um, how to sign up and register for that if you aren't already. And if you are interested in, in issues about equity and early childhood and the connections across um, different agencies and sectors, this is a, a great way to explore some of that with others in our county and regionally. So we encourage you to sign up and attend. And then we also uh, would love to have your feedback on this coffee chat. We use your feedback to design future ones and to change up some of the information and, and um, formatting. So we really do heed your um, advice to us and we appreciate any thoughts you have about the coffee chat content or delivery or the experience of things like the bilingual um, or uh, interpretation or being in the Spanish language channel. So please do click on these links that Nicole's putting in the chat so that you can um, give us that feedback. And then if you'd rather uh, communicate with us individually. Our emails are on this page, but we just want to thank Heather and Liz um, for the presentation and sharing this information for our county. I can see that there's a lot of interest and excitement um, and how this can support other existing networks of referrals. And also want to thank Stella again for her um, incredible live translation of, um, of everything that's happening here. So Thanks to all of you for joining. Stay in touch and stay tuned for more to come. We'll, we'll hang out for a couple minutes if you have some extra questions. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>